We are thrilled with the court's decision today. We think this is a great day for religious freedom. The court reaffirmed that American families don't give up their constitutional right to religious freedom just, that they, just because they open a family business. One of the most anticipated rulings of the year today, the U.S. Supreme Court sided with arts and crafts giant Hobby Lobby. The court ruled that for-profit corporations have religious rights and cannot be forced to offer certain types of birth control coverage under U.S. President Barack Obama's health care law. Hobby Lobby argued the mandate went against their religious beliefs and opposition to abortion. Bob Parks is a video producer and writer for blackandright.com. He joins us now from Washington. Thanks for being here, Bob. Uh, so we got a 5-4 decision today, but there was a narrow sc scope, which only applied to what's closely held corporations. Break this down for our Canadian viewers. What does everything from today mean? Well, a closely held corporation is basically a, a business, uh, doesn't matter if it's a mom and pop or a huge business, but it's a business that is run by a small group, but pretty much a family, as opposed to a ba major corporation that has 900 uh, vice presidents and, and, and board of, board of uh, directors, and, and it's a closely held corporation. This family decided that they did not want to pay for four out of 24 prescriptions that had something to do with birth control. The four in particular were what, were, what are loosely referred to as abortifacients or drugs or prescriptions that cause the killing of a, fee, of a, of a, of a human being. And so, so that's what they, they said they did not want to do that. Now, previously, before the lawsuit happened, or before, basically, this was in response to Obamacare, uh, Hobby Lobby covered everything. And there was a choice at that point. But what, and, but what happened was once it became forced, and I have a little be, um, black and rightism that I always say that progressives come up with programs that are so wonderful they have to force you to use them. Hmm. Once this went in place, they had no choice but to observe their religious, their religious feelings, and um, they refused to pay for the abortifacients. All right, Bob, now break it down for us. What's the aftermath going to look like? Because what I'm thinking now is, okay, the mom and pop shop doesn't have to necessarily cover all sorts of birth control. Walmart does. Um, but mom and pop shop doesn't. So we've got an employee, let's call her Sandra Fluke. She wants her uh, uh, pres prescriptions. Uh, is it now going to be on the backs of the U.S. taxpayer as opposed to mom and pop shop? Well, that is something that has been bandied about as a possibility because, uh, as a, you know, what Sandra, people like Sandra Fluke are, are implying that this is now, it has totally blown up the war on women and all of a sudden with the ruling of the Supreme Court today, all women's reproductive rights are at risk. And that is, for not, there's nothing further from the truth because abortion is still legal in this country and women can still go out and get the, the uh, birth control that they desire, in the case of those four that Hobby Lobby did not want to cover out of 24, heaven forbid they're going to have to pay for it themselves. And in some cases, it, it costs as little as $9 at a Walmart. Now, what, what, what you were just alluding to, will the Obama administration turn, sort of try to circumvent the Supreme Court and say, we will cover that? and have taxpayers do it? Well, if you also remember when, when Obamacare was first uh, being bandied about as well, one of the things that, that, was, uh, that came about was the whole notion of taxpayers having to fund abortion. This is going to be another broken promise, or we'll, we'll see. I mean, but that, that, is a, that is a possibility. Now, you bring up a great point, which is this war on woman rhetoric. In your opinion, Bob, how should the right now respond to this noise that is bleeding all over social media already? Well, I, I, you know, the thing is, I think you have to be very careful when you try to um, get engaged in, in um, meaningful dialogue with crazies. I mean, if you look at a lot of things that are going on on Twitter right now, it's about it's, it's, the, the range is from boycotting Hobby Lobby to burning them down. So uh, how do you respond to that? Um, it's as the, the left said when Obamacare was challenged by the Supreme Court and was upheld, um, it's the law. And you just have to deal with the law.
<laughs> and last time I checked, one third of the plaintiffs in the case were actually a uh, woman as well. Uh, very quickly in the last few seconds we have left, uh, this to me was SCOTUS telling POTUS, no, you can't. Is this sort of heavy-handed legislation just something that we've come to expect from the Obama administration? Well, again, when it, this this there were so many promises that uh, that uh, Obamacare promised the American people, and we find one by one as you're peeling the layers off the onion that a lot of these things aren't true or things that have been forced. And you know, there are certain groups, for example, in this country that have religious exemptions for them that um, the ACLU would not touch because these people. You might not want to mess with them. But when it comes to Christians, they're easy to go after. <laughs> That's right. And hey, religious freedom is a bedrock freedom of all uh, uh, Western liberal democracies. Uh, thank God it was upheld today. Thanks for your time, Bob. <laughs>